Hey guys, this is Navinia. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So the next question in this set, I quickly take it that why do we use Chrome driver and Geeko driver or iDriver.executable files? It's a very, very interview, important interview question and then very famous. And then you should know about how exactly Selenium works, what is Selenium architecture and everything. Very important question. And then you should know how to handle this. So uh, just to give you a basic idea about it, what do you mean by Chrome driver.exe? Why do we need that? You must have seen certain code like this that we have to set up the uh, .exe file like this Chrome driver.exe or in Mac machine, we have to do it like this. We have to do it for the Geeko driver also like that. And then only you can communicate with your browser, the respective browser. So what happens? Uh, this Chrome driver.exe file that I'm using it. But before that, let's see, I'm writing my script over here in any language. It really doesn't matter that you are using Java. You are using Python. You are using Selenium with JavaScript or any language binding that you are using it. And whatever the code that you are writing it over here, right? Let's see for dot click dot send keys, click on it and then submit the button and then quit the browser, close the browser and everything in the respective language that you are writing it. And then what happens in between? We need one middleman. We need one middleware which will behave like a Selenium server for me. So this is my Selenium standalone server. And this server will be started from your Chrome driver.exe file. So this is my Chrome driver, that executable file that you are using it. This will help me to, this will behave like a server for me. Right. And then what exactly I'm doing it. Once the server is up and running in between, and then I'm sending my first request that, okay, web driver driver equal to a new Chrome driver. And that's why I'm sending the request to the server and then saying, okay, please launch a browser. Server will process this particular request and then it will launch a new brand browser over here. That is, let's see, for example, in this case, it will launch a Chrome browser here. Now, whatever the communication is happening between this client script that you have written, it will happen with the browser via this particular server. So you have to send all the requests to the server and then only it will perform some action on it. Let's see, I want to launch the URL. I want to click on this particular button. I want to enter some value over here. I want to do a right click. I want to do a move to element. I want to close the browser. I want to minimize the browser or whatever. I want to do it on the this particular browser. Everything has to be uh, gone through via this particular Selenium server, right? Now, if you are using Chrome driver latest.exe file and you are using Selenium, uh, of four with any language binding, the communication will happen with the help of a W3C web driver protocol. If you're using the older version of a Selenium, like uh, like before Selenium 3.7 or something, then in that case, we were using that time JSON wire protocol, right? So ultimately the communication is happening via W3C protocol or JSON wire protocol. I have already prepared a very nice video. What do you mean by W3C? What do you mean by JSON wire protocol? We just watch that particular video separately. But right now we are not talking about what is W3C. We are talking about that. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by this particular Selenium server? How exactly the server, server will help me to communicate with the browser? Same thing. If you really want to use a, a Firefox, so you have to start a Firefox Geeko driver that you have to use. In case of Edge driver, you have to use Edge driver.exe. In case of some, let's see, Opera, you have to use the respective uh, .exe file over here. In case of Internet Explorer, you have to write Internet Explorer driver.exe file that you have to use it. And whenever I'm sending the request, let's see, to the Geeko driver, and then it will communicate with the Firefox over here like this. Like guys, so remember one thing, whenever I'm writing driver equal to new Chrome driver, it will always maintain one session ID over here. And now this particular session ID is equal to, for example, one, two, three. So same session ID will be maintained throughout the session. And then finally I've written driver dot quit or close for every request that I'm sending to the server, the same session ID will be maintained one, two, three, one, two, three for everything. The moment I send the request with driver dot quit, the same session ID will be sent over here to the browser, I mean to the server and the request will be processed over here to close the browser, browser will be closed. And after that, the session ID will be null now. It means whenever you are sending next request to the server, session ID is null and then server will reject this request saying that, okay, hey, are you using driver.quit after a dr selenium driver.quit? It means your session ID is null. So that's why I cannot proceed further. That's why I have to start a new session once again. Right guys, so without this uh, server, without this guy, you cannot imagine 
about your request sending to the server so this server entity is important so this will behave like a middle middleman for me or whatever you call it okay a middleware or a kind of uh, <clears throat> a mediator between uh, your client and then the chrome like that okay so that's why we need this particular .exe file same concept will be available for other browsers also another thing you have to remember that guys that um, who provides that actually so this is not the selenium responsibility because see what happens that they understand better that how exactly the chrome will behave they understand better that okay how exactly the firefox will behave this guy will understand how exactly that internet explorer will behave so this is provided by microsoft this is provided by mozilla this is provided by google right so it's not the selenium responsibility it's a respective browser vendor responsibility to provide the chrome driver.exe file over here and it's their responsibility to make sure that okay this chrome driver.exe is a w3c web driver standard same thing for uh, geeko driver same thing for internet explorer driver or other respective browsers so if you see the basic official documentation here that uh, you you can see selenium official documentation you have to set the path driver that's why we always write the driver path over here for these things like for a chromium based browser of a chrome based browser we have to that is maintained by google firefox maintained by mozilla edge maintained by microsoft internet explorer by selenium project only because after windows 10 they have stopped the support but internet explorer is still maintained by uh, the exe file is maintained by selenium project only by selenium dev team only safari by apple opera by opera and this is the path that you have to set it over here in different languages like that so in java you have to set the property like this like this right so you have to download this particular chrome driver.exe file which will behave like a server for me without the server you cannot communicate with the browser so that's why i need this server and this chrome driver.exe file will behave like a selenium server or selenium standalone server or you can see a normal selenium server also you can say that if you see the official documentation of chrome driver.exe here you can download the respective uh, .exe version for your browser and then uh, for your chrome browser or chromium based browser you can see that and this is the official documentation for uh, a web driver status that what exactly the different calls that you are sending from the client so whatever the request that we are sending the code that we are writing internally it will behave like an will be converted into the rest api and through the rest api through the w3c wire protocol one http request will be sent to the server because right now you cannot rightly i cannot every time i cannot use the apis directly so on top of that they have created number of wrapper methods like driver.get method driver.title method equal i mean uh, current url get window handles man, maximize minimize there are various of methods are available in selenium web driver so you are you have to write the logic and then internally it will call the web driver apis request will be sent to the server so these are the different apis and there is only post put sorry post get and delete apis are available there is no put patch apis are available okay for example let's say i want to generate a session so for new session we have to send this particular request i have already prepared a very good video how to deal with the apis in postman also you can directly hit it i'll share that video link in the uh, description of the url you can have a look for example let's say i want to do a back and forward navigation so every time you have to pass this unique a uh, session id that i told you right in the same diagram one two three one two three this session id has to be passed for example let's see i'll just show you in the debug mode over here this is my geeko driver that i'm using it and firefox driver that i'm using it and then i'm running in the debug mode and let's see how exactly the session id and everything will work so here first it will start the server and then you will see a message over here on the console that uh, a geeko driver got started listening on this particular port number this is my geeko driver is running it means the server is up and running now you can communicate with the server and then when i write driver equal to new firefox driver and see this this is when i mouse over on the driver you can see there is a session id this is your session id firefox on mac machine and this is your session id got generated and if you see different other other attributes also associated with the driver and this is a session id will be maintained and this session id will be maintained throughout the session until you use driver.quit or driver.close so when I uh, run the next command, this driver.get API will be called. It means launch the URL. Which API will be called? Somewhere the get API will be called over here. Get API means to launch the URL. So this API will be called internally to navigate to the specific URL. Okay. So that's why uh, same session ID will be maintained over here. So Selenium internally will maintain the session ID. Request will be sent to the server and server will launch the URL. 
over here. Right now it's a blank URL and now when I run it with google.com and then you can see the google.com entered over here. So this is how the server will help me to interact with the respective browser over here like this. I hope it's clear now. So remember they're saying chrome driver.exe, geeko driver.exe, i.exe or any other browser specific .exe or executable file. These are also called binary files. Okay, so if someone is asking you what do you mean by binary files, these are also called binary files, executable files, selenium server files, okay, different names you can see that. It will behave like a middleman for me between the browser, between the browser and the code that you are writing it and it's totally independent of the specific language. You can use Java also, you can use Python, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, whatever that you are writing it. The same server you have to maintain that and then the server is available for Windows laptop. You can use it for Linux laptop also. You can use it for Mac machine also. Selenium does not support Unix uh, platform. So that's why there is no Unix platform is available like that. Same thing, you can check it over here. Let's see for Chrome driver. I want to check the versions or latest one. Let's see that this is one. And here for you can see Linux, Mac for M1 chip and the Windows machine. There is no Linux uh, binary file is available over here. So whatever it's required, whatever the laptop machine that you are using it or any Docker container in the form of Linux you are using it you have to download the respective executable file to start the server so that you can interact with your browser. This is the perfect answer for this question. This is what you have to explain at a time of interview. Okay, so please watch other W3C videos also on my channel. What do you mean by JSON wire protocol? How to send the request? There are two or three videos I'm going to share in the description. Please watch that. It will be crystal clear in your mind. What do you mean by these different entities in Selenium WebDriver architecture? I hope it's clear. Please subscribe to the channel guys. If you have any specific question, you want me to prepare the video on this, let me know, put it in the comment section. I'll definitely prepare it. Please share it, subscribe it, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.